And now we're going to bring in my two friends that I have met traveling doing stand up. And you know, it sounds like this glamorous life, but we all really work like a bunch of dogs hustling for 500 bucks to, to go across the country and the world to play your own air, pay your own airfare. I mean, it really, but then you look around and go, wow, I know some pretty freaking great people. So from the UK, I call her brilliant, beautiful, and biting, uh, Joe Caulfield. Thanks for being today, here with me today, Joe. Woo! Woo! Hello to me. And trapped in Rome, our beloved, uh, you know, they, everybody thinks you're sexy and hot. I hope that doesn't uh, offend you. Uh, and I know we're making you a sex object, but deal with it. Uh, Francesco <laughs> DiCarlo, who's special right now on Netflix. Hi, hi, everybody. Hi, Larry. Hi, Joe. Hi, Maureen. How are you guys? Oh, good. Uh, good. So here's what I want to know. How are you guys dealing with being trapped? Uh, let's go with Joe. I, I am loving it so far because I feel social distancing really suits me. It's kind of how often I want people at a distance. And also the area I live in, like when I went to the supermarket and they're being very strict for two meters apart. Yes. And I was thinking, oh, I would like it like four meters apart and all of the time, that would be great. Yeah. And I even, even the socializing, you know, when you, I've had some, uh, oh, I explained to people that it is 11 o'clock at night here. I'm not drinking in the day, but uh, I can do that uh, you can do you have a zoom chat and you have wine and uh, and then everybody's gone you don't have to dress up you don't have to travel i just go i have my wine we've had a chat for an hour and now my bed is upstairs great yes, yes social isolation can be a good thing however you uh, we can all get out to the store southern california you know new york i just got back out to california myself uh, you can in Edinburgh, but uh, Francesco, what about you in Rome? Are you still lo on total lockdown in your house or are you able yeah. to get up? No, um, you can leave your flat just for work reason or to buy groceries. And uh, luckily I, I, ho I host uh, a radio show. So twice a week I can go to the radio station at least uh, for a while, which is very, very good because uh, we are a, a couple of weeks in advance with respect to Joe. So yeah. uh, we've been quarantined now for more than one month, for sure. Yeah, six weeks. Oh it's, yeah, because we're, it's we're crazy. A, a month now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So two involved. weeks, two weeks in advance. So the first stage was exactly like the Joe one. Like uh, you, mm. you like uh, to be alone, and you say, "Okay, be at I just home, need no travel, yeah. yeah, movies and ice cream, and I'm happy because I don't like <laughs> yeah. people." Now I'm, uh, I want people. Now I'm, re <laughs> I just need uh, hugs. I, I'm reconsidering, you know, all the free hugs uh, stuff. Oh, you know, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The free hugs things that I, and I used to criticize those people to do free hugs in the street. And now I miss them so much. <laughs> I want, people? You, you remember when people with signs on the street saying free hugs. Oh, I thought you were one of those. Okay. No, 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 no. I, I used to say, why are you doing this stupid thing? You know, because oh. I, I thought it was stupid. And now I say, why did I get my free hugs when I, it was free, by the, by the way. So it's right. like, uh, I, I would like to uh, touch people, you know. And I would really... love for you to give me a free hug. Do you understand? <laughs> yes. I, I would be willing to let you do that. <laughs> yeah, because this... <laughs> uh, I think it will be when everyone can finally hug again. That will be a big thing. I think so too. Yeah. Yeah, when everyone like to meet people for a drink outside and to and everyone will, I mean, even British people will be very affectionate, I think. So. Yeah, and coughing, <laughs> coughing yeah. in front of each other. You know what it is too, I think, look, everybody's struggling right now, no matter, for people with small businesses, people with big businesses, people, individuals. The thing too with, with performing is that um, there's zero safety net and there's a lot of, workers in the world who don't have safety nets but all of our schedule i mean mine's cleared out indefinitely i'm assuming the same for all of you there's not one gig on the books zero there's a couple in june which i know are going to get canceled and you know part of this business for me i don't know how all of you create but for me i have my tried and true foundational elements of my humor but i'm such a riffer in between just naturally and those are how i pluck my new bits and bring them in so now I would be bringing in some of the stuff about the virus, um, how I handle with my humor, but you can't work that out. 
So I feel like in six months, it's all going to feel so dated because you can't go up there with not making people laugh. So you have to do, how are you folks handling that? Let's start with Larry. I'll, I'll ask you first. Well, right now, because um, the shows I'm working on are down, I don't really have to deal with it at all. And, you know, so it's, again, it would be the, if we come back, like with Barry Manilow or something, he's certainly not going to make jokes about a deadly virus. No, no. There may be a joke about himself. We bring it back to him, you know, well, somehow put him, to make so him the punchline. Right. Like, I'm going to make fun of Facebook and I'm trying to learn technology to connect with people. And they're telling me, maybe you have to erase your history on the computer. And I'm like, you know, no, I've had years of therapy. I can't erase my history. <laughs> like, I would do stuff like that, you know, that kind right. of humor. Um, how it affected me. Well, you know, there are going to be people who are offended that you use humor to deal with your pain. Some people paint, some people do marathons, some people go on antidepressants. So we have to deal. But I'm talking about like, Joe, moving forward, like when you, when we get back on stage in six months and Joe Caulfield, you guys lines around the block to see her at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. Um, I was crying in my room next door where 10 people showed up because it was 10 at night <laughs> upstairs and nobody knew where the hell I was, right? Um, it doesn't matter. God has a plan. Wish he had a better party planner. But, um, I mean, you're a killer comic. Uh, so, you know, in four months, six months, your material, which is tried and true, you is going to be not all dated, but you're not going to be updated is what I'm saying on the stage. You're yeah. Not, I mean, that, uh, yeah. it is. That was when they were, they were going, oh, shall we cancel the Edinburgh Festival or not? Maybe things will be okay by August. And comments like me were going, but how, we won't have shows because, you know, May, June and July is all trying it out in front of a live audience and honing it. I can't write it at home and then just do it in exactly. August. So exactly. I think they didn't realize, you know, we're not going to have shows. And then the other thing that everyone thought, everyone is going to have a coronavirus show. So I think for the audience, it's going to be nice because that will be gone for next year. We'll all have part, got over it, all the jokes. Not that, just the jokes that are all similar, if people are doing similar stuff, it was like Brexit, everyone's like, oh, not another Brexit joke, you know, or whatever it is, the theme of the year. But, yeah. um, but just when you were saying about what you can't make jokes about, I still try to do stuff on social media, you know, about the virus and things, just because I think that's my job, you know, if I can put something out. And today, you know, people take things so the wrong way. So the Prime Minister of New Zealand, who's a marvelous yeah. woman, can't remember her name, Jacinda or something. Yeah, I think. let's go with that. So, yes, yeah, she said that she's only going to take half of her salary, which is great because MPs here have demanded more expenses because they have to work at home now. So, uh, so that's great. And there was an article about it. So I put it up going, yeah, that's great. Blah, blah, blah. Really lovely. But it's New Zealand. How much money do you need in New Zealand this fuck all to spend it on? <laughs> so I thought, oh, that's quite funny. And immediately it starts to row of like, but it was such a generous thing. And our MPs, I'm like, I'm not making a point. It's, oh, it's I a joke. Oh, and then, no. so, and then I, when the timeline changes, I suddenly realize, oh, now New Zealand can see it. And they're all, I'm really proud of her. I'm proud to be a Kiwi. I'm, I'm just really enjoying meeting all my new humorless friends you, know? <laughs> you just never know how things will go well, that's the whole thing people take it so seriously like everybody's putting their um their high school graduation yearbook picture up on facebook because it's supposed to be in solidarity with all those young kids who can't hmm. graduate have a ceremony and i'm like yeah let's do that let's put pictures of ourselves to remind people they're not going to have what we had and then maybe hmm. after that we can post some bottles of gin to a, a, an aa website what are people doing? You know, and then, well, yeah. I think it's a good thing that we're doing this. And I, I'm doing it in solid. Oh, shut up. I'm, oh, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. And if my headshot was, all, if I looked pretty when I was a senior, I would be posting it. So I'm just getting on my high horse, you know, just because I can. But I, you know, if I were prettier. Well, I would, it doesn't I reinforce your low self-esteem. I say, I used to look like that. Look what happened. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so let's go, Francesca, let's talk about you. I mean, Francesco's special um, is on Netflix, and I've been watching it. It's uh, Italian with English uh, subtitles, and it's called something I can't pronounce. Please say it slowly. Oh, cose di questo mondo. And it's on my Facebook page with a picture of you. Wait, wait, wait. Say it again, Francesco. Cose di questo mondo. Is mondo world? Questions yes. of the world? No, it's a, a things of this world. Ah, okay. Because it's a, it's a play of word uh, about uh, a, a saying that we have in Italy. Because it's, a, it's a, about me traveling the world and so it's like uh, talking about things 
of this world. Have you done stand up in the UK? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. At the fringe, I was at the Fringe Festival uh, last summer. Oh. Yeah. You know Luca Luca Capone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are, we you are do. He's close really friends. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are very, very well. close friends. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, what I wanted to set up for Francesco because um, we all met. Like I met Joe at the Edinburgh um, Festival. I worked with Francesco in Switzerland and South Africa, and I was supposed to go there this August too with my show. Mm. Hate you. Don't make me hate you. I'm actually a t-shirt saleswoman now. I sell these on my website, it's or you tough. can donate to support the show. Morianlander.com. I'm a whore. But um, well, I was watching your special, and this was quite, um, this is quite uh, prolific, actually. You, on your special, because you had just moved uh, to London, and I want you to tell the story, but you had a quote on there that really resonated with me. You said, it's um, a tough experience to abandon one's certainties. And you said that prior to this whole virus. It's um, tough experience to abandon one's certainty. So talk about that in terms of Brexit and today. With your yeah, comments. basically, basically uh, my dream was to, to be an international comedian because stand-up is a pretty a new thing in Italy. And I decided to, to translate my material in English. And I, I, 10 years ago, I didn't know English at all. So I studied English and I oh. started to do very good. stand-up. Very good. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. And I started to do comedy in London, blah, blah, blah. And so one day I decided to leave Italy and take all my money, little money. And London is so expensive. But when I decided to do this, they voted for Brexit to leave Europe because of immigrants uh, and other not reasons. Me. Not, not me. you, not, not you, me. not you. I'm sure about it. So it was at, at, at one point I was in a very good position because uh, I was, um, I was uh, like in Italy, we have a, a problem with um, foreigners. So what I used to say is like uh, in Italy, I'm the guy who doesn't like foreigners because I, st- I think that they're gonna steal my job. As soon as I got in the UK, British people thought that I <laughs> was the one who's going to steal their jobs. Right. So, uh, yeah, I, I can teach advanced xenophobia in uh, <laughs> at the University. <laughs> it's a great position, you know, because you can see, uh, like, the world uh, from a foreigner point of view, which is a very good point of view. Mm-hmm. Obviously, uh, I'm very lucky because I, I, I had a... Uh, you know, a, a house, uh, a flat, uh, and, a, and, a, and a job, but it was very, very hard, especially with Brexit. So um, I started to do, you know, about all the situation. Brexit should should have been the, the worst thing that happened in my life, and then I wrote a book about it, taped a Netflix special. So sometimes good things uh, came out from bad things. And uh, and talking about the virus, I think that this is a very good moment for comedy. Because uh, what we are doing right now in Italy, it's a, like a, a, a talk show like this one, a chat show, every night in Italian, obviously. And uh, we are all stand-ups and we invite journalists and uh, uh, funny people or uh, scientists uh, just to talk every night. And uh, we are receiving so many good responses from the, the cities which are more in difficulty, like for the virus. Because people say, I'm stuck home, Thank you guys, because I can spend time with you. You know, so I don't get why people, we have to be careful because the people are more sensitive. We don't make jokes about, you know, the, the virus. We're just trying to be, I think that this is a moment in which politicians have to do politics, doctors have to do uh, medicine and comedians have to do comedy. You know, this is exactly what we have to do. I do know that, um, and you know. Hey, can I ask you, Francesca? Were you involved in politics at some point? Yeah. Watching your special, my, I don't know if that was a joke or true. Do no, no, no. It was true. My, my, pre- my previous life, I was uh, working at the European Parliament. That's that's the irony of the thing. <laughs> that then, because I, I after the university, I worked uh, as a press officer at the European Parliament for four years, and then I decided to to do comedy because uh, Italian politics, uh, as you know, are very similar. Mm-hmm. To mm-hmm. comedy, <laughs> they're very helpful. Well, no, that's working. not the case here. Here, everything is really great with our government. <laughs> <laughs> no, we have a king yeah. now, Joe. We have a king. You have a queen. We have a king. <laughs> yeah, but we started it yeah. because Donald Trump looks like an Italian 
politician. Boris Johnson looks like an Italian politician. <laughs> you know, we, we had the, the, the trademark of this kind of politicians. So we are pretty jealous because the first one was Berlusconi. The good news though is that you wouldn't be welcome in our country either, uh, Francesco. So there's a lot of things you can add to your act now, not just London. Hmm. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, and I love, like, uh, the second plan was to, to come to the US and do, and do comedy there because you have the best comedy in the world. You know, London and New York or Los Angeles are the, the, the best, or Chicago, you know. In yeah, Italy, no, I can't get stage time anymore. Uh, anyway. Yeah, but, but in Italy, I make more money because <laughs> when you, when you uh, here, you, we have less competition. You know? no, <laughs> there are, there are so kidding. many good comedians <laughs> <laughs> there. Well, let me ask you this, you guys, um, particularly, you know, Joe, uh, you start this. Um, we're considered gig workers here in the U.S., and for the first time in the history of America, they're actually going to offer some kind of financial support to gig workers. Um, I think it's going to be $600 uh, a week. Uh, so what are they doing in the U.K. for you guys? They are doing the same thing, which I was really, really surprised at. Um, they did a thing straight away for people who were furloughed, people who are employed, and then everyone went crazy going, what about self-employed? You know, especially because they're a conservative government, they're meant to be all about the self-employed. You know, it's meant to be all about, you know, or you can, you know, do something, just get it, you know, work for yourself. Oh, perhaps, yeah. So now they are, apparently, they are going to give us, um, it's 80% of your average earnings they will give us pay 80% of your average earnings uh, under, as long as it's under 50K. Oh. So there are quite a few comics going, damn, I wish I had not cheated on my expenses <laughs> because they're doing it on their tax returns. Right, <laughs> you know? right. So, but they say, oh, you won't, we won't even get the forms to fill in until June. Um, but the fact that they offered anything, I was really surprised. Yes, um, but they would think it was because they realized so many of those people, you know, it can be window cleaners, it painter and decorators, it's people who vote for them, you know, the small business people. So they, they realized they had to do something. They didn't want to give money to people like comics or artists, you know, right. but they've, they've had to because we're, we're part of that. Right. Well, here in the uh, U.S., people, uh, the strippers want to be uh, paid. And I think, why not? Why the hell not? They're working. Well, anyone, anyone who's self-employed, if you're paying taxes, mm -hmm. then you should, you're entitled to it, surely. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so what about you, Francesco, in Italy? How are they taking care of you guys? No, they are not taking care of us at, at all. We, we had 600 euros, uh, not everybody, but just once, not every week. This is uh, for How us. Oh, wow. Pay? 600 euros, uh -huh. but it's like, it's uh, just one time. It's not a, a weekly salary. It's so, a one-off payment. Yeah, for the wow. self-employment in every kind of uh, um, job, not only in comedy or mm. show business. And then um, everybody's worried here because uh, like, um, I think that we will reopen everything for sure after the summer. And so there will be six months with, with no shows. So I, I think How at least, at least. How are you gonna live with zero income? I'm lucky because I have, I have the radio show and, uh, and I also working on other projects, but the main part of my, my income was live. Uh, and I was, I was going to start a new tour right now and but like me there are so many people not only comedians also uh, musicians and so we are thinking about uh, uh, i think that the government will do something like in the in, in mm. the uk people have done here um uh, shows on zoom live streaming shows with donate buttons and been really surprised that people donate they oh. actually, actually do you know, it's the thing that been, for years people are going, oh, how do you make money doing podcasts? People don't pay. But weirdly, because this is going on, mm -hmm. and also there's a lot of people sitting at home getting their wages and they're bored. And uh, so they're going, oh, these guys are giving us something for nothing. And so people are, so done a few things and you you get a few quid. 
Well, let me be a shameless plug. I'm not even kidding because this is my work now is to create a show, yeah. bring good content to people and not just wing it and find quality people like yourselves to come on. And I literally sell these shirts, Don't Make Me Hate You, on my website. And then go to don'tmakemehateyou.com or maureenlangan.com. And I have a PayPal at Mo uh, Langan at Gmail and Venmo. And all the information is on my website at maureenlangan.com. And, you know, I pay it forward too. I have a friend making masks and I sent her a donation somebody gave me last week. Um, so, you know, I try to make it win-win, but we're all working. We're doing the best we can and blah, blah. So, um, and a big shout out to Jeannie Locklear who supported me uh, after last show and Sharon, uh, well, uh, Burdick is her last name now, but I went to high school with her. So thank you guys. Thank you. Uh, my Bye, guys. Mwah! Now I have to learn how to stop this. All right. <laughs> Bye, you guys. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.